Right, can I have your attention, please? Um, I now want to make a little uh, speech about the purpose of the design challenge. Um, please listen, because I think it's important. I want to define what is a professional engineer. And a professional engineer is someone with appropriate qualifications, experience, um, training, and hopefully a member of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers um, who can develop satisfactory solutions to engineering problems and requirements. This may include the development of new techniques. It may include the implementation of engineering services or management uh, methods. However, many undergraduates that come into the world of work have no common sense and they don't know how to apply the knowledge they've gained at university. And I can give you a first-hand example of this. Um, I was the managing director of a company who manufactured gearboxes for commercial vehicles. I was the managing director for 24 years, so I had a little bit of experience. We used to take graduates on, in the, and they go into the design office, and they would quite often design gearboxes that you couldn't assemble. They would design uh, component parts that you couldn't machine on conventional machine tools. They designed castings for gearboxes that were twice as heavy as they should be. They would get the calculations right for the gears and the torsional twist for the shafts and the beam strength of the teeth, size of the teeth of the gears. They do all those things right, but the practicalities of putting it together, they didn't get right. So in 2007-2008, we introduced the design challenge. Or should I say, I introduced the design challenge. And I did that because I wanted to address this national problem. And I wanted to expose first-year undergraduates to the real world of engineering at a very early stage in their studies so that they would learn to think for themselves and apply a practical, systematic approach to solve an engineering requirement. And hence the reason the... Oh, God, that's not supposed to happen. Sorry about that, I thought I'd turn that off. Go off. It doesn't want to go off, but right. Sorry about that, that should have been off. Right, I'll start that bit again. So hence the reason the teams here today were given a detailed specification. And from it, they had to come up with a design solution. They had to make it, they had to test it, and they had to compete internally to get a place in the design challenge competition here today. And I have no doubt, and it was demonstrated during the presentations, that there was a lot of to and fro -ing. There was a lot of changes in design and scrapping the design and starting again. And I hope that the individuals and the teams have realised that if they had known more about the principles of engineering science and how to apply them, they could have designed this project uh, or this device the first time and it would have achieved the objectives. However, those who are here today whose device did achieve the objectives and lifted the chain to the top and back down to the bottom in a timely manner have actually developed an appropriate solution to an engineering requirement. Um, in other words, they have, they've demonstrated their ability to operate as a professional engineer. Um, whilst keeping within the required specification. The winners of today's final have satisfied the customer's requirements and won the contract, so to speak, because they have met the specification and they've beaten their competitors. And in addition to the prize money that they will get, they'll receive a valuable certificate. And the winning university will receive the regional trophy to keep until next year's competition. The winners and the runners-up of the regional design challenge will go through to the national final on the 2nd of October of this year 
at the institution headquarters on Birdcage Walk in London. And they will have a chance to win the prestigious national trophy and the national contract, so to speak. All of the teams competing today have done well to get to this competition, even if they didn't achieve the objectives. I'm sure they've learned a great deal from it, and I hope it's something they will never forget. So they should be proud of themselves for getting to this competition. And they've kept within a very tight budget of £20 and within a time scale that couldn't be changed. Now the poster and the presentations are also very important because they demonstrate the graphical and pictorial skills and the presentational and verbal skills, all of which form part of the requirements of a professional engineer. Because if you can't do the pre make a good presentation and convince your client, you won't get the contract. So those today that had a very good uh, device that achieved the objectives, if the poster and presentation wasn't up to scratch, they could still lose the business in the real world because they are not presenting it uh, properly. The peer review is also an important aspect of the requirements of a professional engineer. Because if a company doesn't examine the competitors' products and learn from them, then they will not be able to compete against them and, and win the contracts for very obvious reasons. And they can use this intelligence to steal a march on their customers by differentiating their products and producing one that is even better. Of course, their competitors will be doing the same with them, so it squares the occasion. But that's what happens in the real world. Now, I'd like to give you some examples of the design challenge in the real world. An example of, say, a, a typical um, contract that a manufacturing company might be chasing. It could be from an organisation who wants, say, a thousand special compressors to fit into their product. They would go out to tender. They would ask compressor manufacturers to uh, uh, quote for the compressors. And those that came up with the best quotations would be asked to take it further. And they would be asked to produce a prototype and they'd have to develop it and test it. And if, for instance, the product was a refrigeration unit, then the compressor would have to run for very long periods of time without any maintenance. And that would have to be taken into account in, in the design and development and testing stages. And then they would have to go to their customer and make a presentation. They'd have to do that verbally and pictorially. And inevitably, they would have to demonstrate their product, all of which you have done today. The same principle would apply to a contract engineer who was quoting for, say, a steam generation plant. They would have to make a proposal. They'd have to present it to their customer, their client, um, in verbally and pictorially. They might have to demonstrate some of the components and items that are going into the, uh, the design with the hope of winning the uh, contract. And the same principle would apply to a university lecturer because the syllabus is the specification. The preparation is the design and the development. The delivery is the presentation and the poster. And of course, the results are the peer review because they want to know how they've done against others who are delivering the same uh, syllabus or the same course to see if they've done as well or better. And in all cases, they would need to have intelligence about their competitors' products so that they know what they are competing against. And that's what happens in the real world. So the purpose of this design challenge competition is to address all of these requirements and to help you guys prepare for a really exciting career in engineering as a professional engineer in the future. And we hope that we've achieved this and it would be appreciated if you would tell us what you think um, when you fill in the questionnaire a little later this afternoon. Now, I personally, I've been an engineer all of my career, and I can honestly say I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I'm still enjoying it. Um, I've progressed through the ranks to managing director of 
a number of very major companies and eventually to a director of a major PLC responsible for manufacture throughout the world. And you will have the same opportunity when you graduate. It takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of enthusiasm, a lot of knowledge and a lot of application. But it's possible, I've proven that, and you can do the same. So the project today, in today's competition, could be a real project. It could be a lifting device for a building site or an oil refinery. It could be a hoist, it could be a crane, it could be a ski lift. It is not just a university project, it's a real application. Now the motto of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers is to improve the world through engineering. And when you graduate and become a full member, you will be part of it. And then you will be recognised worldwide as a professional engineer. Isn't that something worth having? Because I think it is. And the institution regularly give advice to government on engineering issues. And we must main maintain a very, very high degree of competence to maintain this enviable status. There are numerous problems in this world of ours, and many of them, probably most of them, will be resolved by engineers, not by politicians. And that should secure thousands of jobs worldwide for engineering graduates today. So you guys should have a very good future with a lot of work available for you. As I've previously said, all members of the winning team will be awarded with a formal IMACI certificate. All, um, and all of the competitors here today will also receive a certificate for competing. And that's a very valuable certificate. Keep it safe. Because when you go, when you're looking for a job and you, uh, you go to an interview or even in a, a job application and you tell the employer about entering this competition, and you tell them how this competition expose you to what is required from a professional engineer and that you understand what is required from a professional engineer and you know how to apply the knowledge you've gained, it will certainly help you. And the fact that the certificate is from the IMEC-E will also help you because the IMEC-E the IMEC is well respected throughout the entire engineering industry. And by getting to the final, you've demonstrated you've got what it takes. And that is what industry are looking for. The winning team will have an even better advantage when they attend an interview because of winning this prestigious competition. Now, that concludes what I wanted to say, apart from the challenge last year was a device to climb up the inside of a piece of transparent tube, um, 100 millimetres diameter, and then return to the bottom carrying a chain an equally difficult challenge. The national final last year was won by a team from Lancaster University with a time of about three seconds. And we're now going to show you a very short video of the final of last year's competition. Please. Right. Very impressive, I'm sure you'll agree. That, for instance, could be a device for cleaning a pipeline. It could be a, dice, a device for dragging a cable through a, pri a pipeline. Once again, it's not a university project, it's a real life project. So, now we are, the next part of the event today is the prize giving, and just give us a few minutes to uh, get our uh, winners together and the prizes, and we'll be with you in just a few moments. Thank you.